This is why I like coin ops. You got these executable files here. You just double click and within seconds, you turn your computer into. And once you're in here, you have all these cool arcade games, but also you can sort the arcades by year, by manufacturer, by type of game, as you see here. And not only that, this thing has some console games as well. Everything from GameCube, Nintendo 64, Super Nintendo. And as you see here, it's got a nice little collection. You can just click on any game you want. Let's say Return of the Jedi here for Super Nintendo. And it opens up RetroArch and you're already gaming. It has beautiful bezels, scan lines, the whole thing. I'm already in the game and I'm already dead, but uh, you can see the scan lines on the screen. You can see the bezels. You can make the bezels uh, darker or lighter if you want to do like daytime or nighttime or whatever you want to do. Um, it's totally up to you and uh, it just works. It's a really fun little time. So I can hit start and select, go back out to coin ops here. And also you can change the different themes like I just did. I just clicked the button, it changed the theme to arcade theme and now I'm on a different wheel here. But uh, what I wanted to show you was within settings, you can then change all the different themes. So these are just the ways of which everything is displayed. And as I said earlier, you can change it to daytime bezels, night dusk bezels, lights out bezels, night bezels. You can disable the bezel, single bezel with the click of a button. You can also change it to clear glass effects for maybe if you want to play more modern games or reflective glass if you want more or scuffed glass if you want more of a retro look. Um, you can disable scan lines, put them on. It comes with background music, it comes with all kinds of stuff. So in this video, we're going to go ahead and check out all these things um, about this new coin ops, Artashi Max 2. The two means more fixes, more enhances, more options, more settings, more games. So let's get into it. It's gonna come zipped up. You unzip it, you're gonna be left with this folder here. If it's your first time ever installing a CoinOps build, there are fixes over here. You need to install DirectX, the VC Redistro for Microsoft. Um, a lot of computers have that installed already, but you can always, it'll tell you if you have it already or not, so it can't hurt to go ahead and install it anyways. Um, <clears throat> if anything is ever broken, look at this, there's restore to defaults, there's a quality focus mode, balance mode, and performance mode. So for example, performance, um, you know, if you want just better performance, you have a slower computer, you might do that. And then you have quality focus, you know, if you want just higher quality, you can handle that. And then there's a balance, something in between the two. There's <clears throat> this helper file here, which gives you all the shortcuts on an Xbox 360 controller. If you don't have an Xbox controller, you can control it with your keyboard um, as well, but you're going to want a controller to play these games. And then these are just different collections. Um, you know, if you don't want a very cluttered experience, you could do, um, you know, different playlists, um, you know, and different ways of sorting it. So there's even the small arcade corner for something smaller. Uh, but if you want the full thing, you go to all playlists here, you get everything. And then the other thing, um, I'll show you later in the video, the different settings you can change, like the different um, themes, as well as the bezels, the shaders, the background music, uh, scan line effects, glass effects. Um, if you're seeing here, these are all little bat files. All you got to do is, um, you know, if you want to change the logos to Sega Genesis, you just double click that, change them to Mega Drive. You just double click this, takes a second, and then you go back and you load the 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 um, Forgotten Worlds from the from the um, EXE file here, and then you're golden. So it's that easy to set this up, to fix things, uh, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. <laughs> Um, so here we are, we're in now, uh, there's just so many games here, you can see total games in the lower right corner, 863, so that's what you're going to get in the arcades, and then consoles, you have a total of 106 games, you can see that in the lower right corner, you can see what system it is in the lower right corner, what year it was came out, um, how many times you've played it, and which cat category it's in. You can add and remove favorites very easily, if there's games, your last played games, um, and then you have different categories here. Um, I'm not going to go through all the games. It's a very good, eclectic, kind of the best of the best games. I know there's going to be a lot of people outraged out there saying, well, it doesn't have this game or it doesn't have that game. Um, you know, unfortunately. Um, and then you can go between letters too by using your trigger buttons at the top of your controller like I just did here. Um, so back to the game selection. Um, you know, you can, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a lot of games. 
I think this is really set up for somebody who's never experienced retro gaming before um, and wants to, you know, check it out. I mean, there's just so many hidden gems on here. Um, if there's just a specific game you want, I mean, it's as easy as going online, finding the ROM, and loading it up with Retro Arch. Um, but this has, you know, a little bit different. So let's go ahead and uh, check out the console. I will show the console games here next. All right, so here are your console games. As you can see in the lower right corner, it's going to tell you the system. And then I'm going to scroll through these pretty quickly. Just want to give you a general idea of what games are there. As you can see, it is kind of the best of the best. You have your bigger franchises on here. Your Zeldas, your Donkey Kong, Mario, um, GoldenEye, etc. But it's nice that it's a good mix. Everything from, you know, like Atari all the way up to now GameCube. Um, and everything's working really well. Um, the settings are very well done. I will say that. Like when you see some gameplay of GoldenEye and some N64 games, you could tell that it's been optimized for the controls as well as the gameplay. And that's not always the case. Um, I, lately, I've been reviewing a lot of hard drives. And this is just the kind of care and detail that you would get from a build like this than you might get from somewhere else. And by the way, did I mention this is free, right? CoinOps are doing this out of the love of retro gaming. They're not, you know, making money on selling these things. It's just you download it, you get it and you can play so very cool on them for doing that all right now let's check out these awesome themes so we had arcade one now we have arcade two there's a little fire in the back and you just see the arcade cabinets as you scroll but um really cool you get to see the t molding the t molding the marquee everything there um, and then as we go through these themes you can see the menus up at the top you get like a really high definition background picture on the right there here you got the box art, kind of box arty posters on the bottom, and then you got the cabinet up at the top. So no wheel. Um, the menu is simply showed through the, you know, the little uh, posters there. So cascading, you'll notice that the way it transitions between the um, different arcade cabinet is cascades. So here you go, clean. It's just literally a high definition background photo. You got the, you can see the marquee cabinet, the logo on the bottom right. Um, still really cool. Uh, fade theme, so this is probably going to be, yeah, the way it kind of fades in and out between um, between the uh, the cabinets. And that I think that changes depending on what quality mode you're on. You can make it kind of fade more or less. Um, Legends, so there's Coin-Op Legends and Coin-Op Legends 2. These were some other builds they came out with, and they had their own special way of scrolling through the games. As you saw there, it kind of was like a poster into the cabinet. Marquee, one of my favorites, you get to see those really cool, especially for arcade games. You know, there's a really cool arcade set on Coin Ops, so you can see the marquees, they're really nice. Uh, spin, so there's a little wheel at the bottom. I don't know if you see that wheel spinning at the bottom. Uh, it spins there, and then the Spin 2, um, I, you've got to look at the menu there. Okay, so it looks like it's the, the, the wheel spins on the bottom right-hand corner on that last one. And then Vertical, the, the, it's more of a menu that goes up and down vertically um, there. <clears throat> vertical 2, similar to that one. Wall, so you have a wall of, you just keep going side left to right and you can see all the different cabinets, just one big wall. And then uh, wall 2, a little bit more zoomed in here. Slightly different, but um, you, know, you can have a, have a look at that. Wheel theme, so this is more your hyperspin. Um, if you like hyperspin, it's, it's kind of the closest thing, but you get that arcade cabinet, a little different. And then wheel two, no cabinet. Let's just show me the screenshot of the game, the bezel. All right, and then this is gonna affect how the game looks in the actual game as well. And you can change kind of how this bezel looks. Do you want the bezel to be very bright or very dark? Do you even wanna just disable the bezel? Do you want just a speakers instead of like a, you know, something distracting potentially? And then these are all effects that make the games look a little different. So these are really cool to play around with. One click will turn them on or off and you can go ahead and click these and then go to a game and then go see what it looks like and go back and forth and um, experiment with the way you like things. Some people swear by scan lines and think it's the best thing since you know sliced bread and it gives you that CRT look on a newer monitor. You know, other people don't like it. They think it looks fake or whatever, or not good. You know, there's all kinds of uh, different theories on that. Uh, so here we go, Arkanoid classic game. Um, as you see, it looks like my bezels are on nighttime uh, because they're very dark. And uh, I could brighten them up if I wanted to. Um, all kinds of other settings as well. Uh, here we go, we have uh, Cruise in the World. I believe this is the arcade version. Running really good. I'm running this on a Xbox 360 controller. And I forget if gas is A or, or trigger. I'm not playing it at this. Um, this is me playing it earlier. And uh, yeah, it ran really great. 
got went from third to first place here, trying to go for the gold here and not go head first into a car. But uh, this is a fun game to play, especially if you had a new kid playing, because you really just got to turn the car. And wow, look at those graphics back then. Amazing. First place, new world record. Here we go. So now we got Nintendo 64. You probably know the game the minute you hear the the sound. And you can see the bezel here now is that um, single bezel, where it's just like a couple speakers on each side. And so some people like this. It kind of eliminates the black space. Uh, kind of makes it look concaved a little bit and um, you know it's a nice little bezel so I'm figuring out the controls here for a second okay I figured out what fire was there and as you see it's it's nice and HD the way they have this set up you can you know obviously go into the retro arch settings and change your resolution or change different graphical settings but I thought it looked pretty good to start um, very no lag uh, speaking of lag you know you can um, you know, it depends on what kind of computer you're running this on, but I would say, you know, anything with an i5 processor or newer, or people ask me what kind of mini PC would this run on, you know, anything like $300 or more, if it's retails for that, would probably run this just fine. And then obviously the more powerful your computer, the better the performance is. And um, yeah, I'm running this on a very powerful computer, but it's just, it's overkill, the, the computer I have this on. Um, so like I said, it looks really great. Uh, one click from the menu, you're into uh, you're playing Nintendo 64, and there's a few Nintendo 64 games on here. You can see back when I went through the through the console listings. I thought you can kill him by exploding that box there, but I guess not. I was thinking, can the can the collateral damage kill that guy? I guess not. So I just have to shoot him in the leg, I guess. All right, and then uh, trying out something a little bit even heavier on the graphical is going to be GameCube here. We have uh, Mario Golf and um, picked Yoshi here. And uh, as we close out this video, just giving my final thoughts, you know, um, it's a great standalone build. It's cool that it's free. It's, um, you know, there's a max version and a non-max version. If you don't want the console games or you want less games, there are smaller download file sizes to do. Um, it's my understanding that this is kind of a um, standalone thing. You can add your own games. You can kind of do things like that. But um, I think there's better, you know, front ends for that. Um, but you can build off this for sure. There's also CoinOps Legends 2, which I like. There's a lot more packs and things out there, both official and unofficial. Um, if you do go to the CoinOps Discord, you know, they do like to only deal with their official packs and things that they're working on. So if you have any third party stuff, you know, I don't know how much support you're going to get on that. But um, it's, it is a really cool community, and I can't thank them enough for all the work that they've done and all the different builds that they've done uh, over the years. It's just really incredible, um, all the iterations that have come out of all these things. Um, so for those reasons, two thumbs up. It's just cool. The whole thing is great. Um, if you're interested in the build, there'll be details in the descriptions. You have to get it on backups.me, and then you just extract it, like I said, and then you have to install those prerequisites, and then you're rocking and rolling. So as far as the pros and the cons of this build, like I said, I think this build is just amazing for somebody just getting into retro gaming or just wants some really easy build. You know, th there's been times when I go to a friend's house and like, let's play, play some retro games. And you would think I have all these options out there, but a lot of them are fairly cumbersome. You know, if you just want something really basic and it just works and there's not a lot of prerequisites to do, this is definitely one of my go-tos, um, especially if it has a game that I want, like an old-school arcade game or something like that. I like how simple it is and how you can change the settings so easily. So even if there's something I don't like, it's just like a click away. It's just really good. But uh, I think that comes to a con for some people watching my channel because they like something that is just more powerful and it has more. You would not believe how many people are asking me comments like, what's the biggest retro gaming collection? What has the most of this? What's the best of this? And um, this is just a good all-around basic build. And when I say basic, meaning you know it's it's very much all-in-one, ready to go, really well sorted out. So that's what I think. Let me know what y'all think. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and we'll catch you on the next one.